Hello, everyone. I'm Zhibo Zhang from Fudan University. It's my great honor to present our work, Identity Confusion in WebView-Based Mobile Epinap Ecosystems. This paper is a joint work for researchers from Fudan University and Professor Yin Zhicao from Johns Hopkins University. Nowadays, mobile applications with the rich functions bring significant convenience to people's daily work and life to better serve existing users and keep attracting new users. These mobile apps become super, which means they often delegate some of their functions to other parties with the aim of enriching content and services. These parties with delegated functions are called sub-apps. They behave like native apps, and this popular co community is called a mobile app app ecosystem. For example, Paytm is a popular mobile payment application from India. The users can order Domino's pizza or use bike taxi in this super app without installing their mobile app versions. So far, these app in app ecosystems have gained a lot of popularity worldwide. On the one hand, as of the time of our work, there are 47 high profile super apps with more than 46 billion downloads in total. In the meantime, these super apps are range from communication, social network, and finance and span across different areas, including Asia, Europe, and the US. On the other hand, the number of sub-apps can be huge in these ecosystems. For example, WeChat, one of the most popular super apps from China, have, has more than 3.8 million sub-apps in its market. Now, let me introduce you a standard programming model and the life cycle of the sub-app. Like a tiny web application, Sub-apps are often written in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. The third-party developers need to upload their sub-app to the market on the bio sub-app. And the sub-app can be found through the universal resource identifier. The URI specifies the super-app protocol and a sub-app ID. An end user can either search in the market, scan a QR code, or click on a deep link containing such URI, which will be handed over to the super app. Then super app can find and load the corresponding sub app into its web view instance. Additionally, sub app can also load other web content from the third party servers, such as advertisement or remote backup. Moreover, the sub app can access some of the privileged APIs provided by super app. However, Given the existence of multi-party resources and access to privileged APIs in one super app, one crucial security research question is determining who can call specific privileged APIs. This is an access control issue or called an identity check problem. To analyze how these popular app in app ecosystems perform identity checks, we first need to take a deep look at the super app runtimes. As illustrated in this figure, a super app provides a runtime for sub apps with three major components. Firstly, super app needs to provide an embedded browser instance to support the running of sub app code. It could be customized web view in Android or the WK web view in iOS. Secondly, super app uses a web to mobile bridge to enable the sub app to call Java functions and return the calling result to their JavaScript environment. The last but not the least in the is, run, is there are runtime APIs in Java side. In our survey study, we find that 80% of these runtime APIs are privileged, which can access lots of user data or OS resources, such as account and banking info, or the camera and GPS location. To our surprise, however, around 50% of the runtime APIs are not documented and should not be exposed to third party sub apps. Existing super apps often perform identity checks in three different ways. First, through a domain name as part of the web origin. Since the web content loaded in web view must come from a web server. Second, an app ID assigned by the super app. Third, a secret or called capability issued by either a super app or a server. When the web content calls a privileged API with its capability, it will be compiled by a super app. However, different identities often coexist for a given entity, as in the instance of WebView. When a super app grants a permission to the intended identity, we find it can be broader than or different from what it actually represents, and thus against 
the least privileged principal. In correspondence with different types of identity checks, we find three kinds of identity confusions, namely domain name confusion, app ID confusion, and capability confusion. To exploit the identity confusion vulnerability, an attacker can craft a fish link and publish it on the web. When victim user triggers it, the attacker can manipulate the corresponding sub app to load malicious web content. And the malicious web content can further exploit identity confusion to access privileged APIs. For example, steal private user account info and send them to the attacker server. Due to the time limit of this presentation, we are going to only focus on the first type of confusion, the domain name confusion. When a super app performs the domain-based identity check, it's expected to fetch the domain of a current API caller and check whether it's in a privileged domain whitelist. As expected, the malicious.com won't be allowed to call a privileged API. However, in a flawed identity check, the malicious.com can borrow the identity of privileged.com to bypass the check and escalate its privilege. Specifically, we classify domain name confusions into two types. The first is a timing-based confusion due to the risk condition exists between different threads of WebView or more super app. This figure shows a risk condition when super app use WebView event handler on page started to record identity. Note that WebView is a multi-thread component. There is a render thread for rendering web content and a broader thread for downloading web content and trigger event handlers. When the malicious.com navigate itself to privilege.com, the broader thread will first trigger on page started and let the super app change the local URL record. However, when broader thread is handling the loading of privilege.com, there exists a time window for render thread to continue to execute its code. Thus, malicious.com get the chance to invoke privileged API by the uh, privileged identity. Even if the super app uses a real-time API to get the identity, confusion could still happen. To reduce the cost of invoking runtime APIs, the super app often dispatches the core event to another thread asynchronously. In this case, a race will happen when the last API core event hasn't been finished but the web content has already navigated to another identity. Thus, when the checker thread try to get and check the identity, it becomes the privileged one, despite this API core event is started from the malicious.com. The second type is a frame-based confusion. It means an iframe can act on behalf of the top frame's identity. The super app often relies on event handlers of WebView component to obtain the identity information. However, we find most of the event handlers only return the top frames URL. They can't be used to implement the identity check. In our study, we find eight out of the 14 event handlers are vulnerable to this confusion. Also, on page started, on page if finished, and get URL commonly used by existing super apps are included. Our analysis of domain name confusion is conducted in two steps. First, we use a static analysis to determine whether the super app uses a vulnerable WebView event handler. Then we write test cases and exploits to trigger the vulnerability. We also use the POV to verify whether the vulnerability exists in the iOS version. This figure illustrates an example to verify the vulnerability for on-page starting. Note that we have different exploit codes when the WebView Chromium version is greater than 72. More details about the vulnerability behavior in different WebView versions are in our paper. As a result, we find that all of the 47 super apps are vulnerable to at least one type of identity confusion attack. Some even worse, for example, WeChat suffers from all kinds of identity confusion, and Microsoft Teams suffers from domain name confusion and app ID confusion. Once exploited by a malicious attacker, it can cause phishing, privacy leaks, and privilege escalation. We find 38 super apps are vulnerable to privilege escalation, 31 are vulnerable to phishing, and 35 to privacy leaks. Due to the time limit, there are two other identity confusions and other interesting results and cases can't be covered here. 
Please refer to our papers for details. In conclusion, in this paper, we conduct the first systematic study on identity confusion vulnerabilities, and we collect and analyze 47 popular super apps to confirm these vulnerabilities. We thoroughly study the root cause and shed light on the future design of Epinap ecosystems. Thank you for your available time. <laughs>